Hey, bio team. Uh, so you guys have learned that during meiosis, uh, different types of genes have two ways that they can assort themselves. Uh, for example, fruit flies have separate genes for wing type and genes for body color. And so during meiosis, it's possible that the genes could be on independent chromosome, that is, they're able to move freely from each other. Uh, but it's also possible that the genes could be linked to the same chromosome. That's, now this might seem like a small difference, but let's say that a parent fly is a heterozygous genotype and its genes are able to assort independently of each other. That is, all the genes are on separate chromosomes. Well, when it comes time for this parent to uh, make gametes during meiosis, uh, there's four possible gametes that this parent could make. It could donate uh, both of its dominant, uh, both of its recessive, or it could donate one dominant and one recessive, or vice versa. Whereas if the parent has the same genotype, uh, but the genes are linked onto homologous chromosomes, well then, there's really only two possible gametes that the parent could make during meiosis. It could either donate, uh, in this case, its chromosome with both dominant alleles, or it could donate its chromosome with both recessive alleles. Uh, but unless crossing over occurred, this parent wouldn't be able to donate a dominant allele and a recessive allele at the same time. It could only donate both of its dominants uh, or both of its recessives. Uh, so how could biologists determine uh, whether two genes are linked to each other on the same chromosome? In our example, how could a biologist determine whether fruit fly genes for body color and wing type uh, are on separate chromosomes or on the same chromosome? Well, what biologists will do is something called a test cross. And test crosses are pretty straightforward. The only thing that you need for a test cross is you need to find a parent fly that is heterozygous for both traits. And so to find a heterozygous fly, biologists will oftentimes make one for themselves. Uh, that is, they'll take two true breeding parents. They'll take a parent that is uh, homozygous dominant for both traits. And they'll take a parent that is homozygous recessive for both traits. Uh, and they'll cross those two parents together. And they know for a fact then that all of the offspring uh, of those two parents would be heterozygous because uh, they know that the offspring is getting dominant alleles from one parent and recessive alleles from the other. All right, so once uh, you have a heterozygous fly available, once you have a heterozygous parent available, in order to do a test cross, the only thing you need to do is cross that heterozygous parent uh, with a pure recessive parent. Uh, that is, get them to have kids. And once that happens, one of two things will occur. And the first possibility uh, it's possible that the offspring of these two parents come out in four phenotypes of equal ratio for each phenotype. And if that occurs, uh, then we know that the genes must have been on separate chromosomes uh, that were able to uh, sort independently during meiosis to produce uh, the four unique gametes. Whereas the second possibility that could occur is that almost all of the offspring come out looking uh, in just one of two phenotypes. And the other two phenotypes are significantly less frequent. And if this is the result of the test cross, well, then we can conclude that the genes must have been linked to the same chromosome, and that the parent was only able to produce uh, two unique gametes uh, without any sort of crossing over. Whereas the two insignificant phenotypes, the two rare phenotypes, we know that those offspring must have been the result of crossing over during meiosis. Uh, so again, in summary, if you want to figure out whether two genes are linked onto the same chromosomes, uh, get a parent that is heterozygous for both traits, uh, do a test cross with a recessive parent, and if their offspring come out in four phenotypes of equal proportions, uh, then the genes must have been on separate independent chromosomes. Whereas if the offspring come out uh, mostly in one of two phenotypes, uh, then the genes were probably linked to each other and a little bit of crossing over occurred. And that's it. At this point, you guys have some practice problems. Uh, we'll see you next class.